Hey everyone, this is Scott Siemens, and today I'm covering uh, how to install a virtual machine on your computer. Uh, if you don't know what a virtual machine is, basically you have a host operating system and it allows you to install a guest operating system. So you can have two operating systems running simultaneously at the same time. Uh, there's lots of different programs that allow you to do this. I'm going to show you uh, VirtualBox today. Um, it can be found at virtualbox.org and it is a free solution for running a virtual machine. So first thing you do is type in VirtualBox, if I can type, into the search and it pulls up, I didn't even finish it, it pulls up automatically. On the left side, you're looking for downloads and then choose the one that would match your host operating system. So I'm on Mac OS X, I would download the Mac version, Windows, download the Windows version, etc. Um, I've already downloaded this, so I'm going to skip this step, but it downloads just a normal install file. Uh, Mac users will get a DMG, and the preview of that would look like this. It's just an image, but you just double click on the icon right here, and then go to your applications folder after it installs just a basic installation, and it'll be in there. So after you've done that, go ahead and open up VirtualBox, and as you can see, I already have um, Windows 7 running right now and it's actually installing some updates here hopefully it finishes looks like it's getting close so um, when that finishes I'll show you what it looks like when it's running but if you when you first get it you won't have any in here so go ahead and click new and that allows you to create a, click, uh, create a new operator or a new virtual machine um, and there's a wizard here that walks you through it pick a name for it let's pretend I'm installing Windows XP you can choose the actual type down here. It's important that you pick the right one. It gives you some general um, settings that you can set for your virtual machine so you know it'll work properly. So it says I need at least 192 megabytes of RAM. And um, for some reason, VirtualBox only lets me use four gigabytes of RAM. I actually have quite a bit more than that, but for some reason, that's the limit it will let me allocate. Um, one important thing to note is that while your virtual machine is running, it's actually consuming up however much RAM that you tell it here. So if I tell it two gigs and you only have four gigs of RAM, um, then you're actually splitting it. You'll get two gigs for your host machine and two gigs for your virtual machine. Uh, as soon as you close your virtual machine, you'll get all four gigs to go back towards the host machine. But it's just important to note that when your virtual machine is running, you will lose this much RAM towards your dedicated operating system. So keep that in mind when choosing. Uh, next, this is where you create the uh, virtual hard disk for your virtual machine. Um, you can also use existing ones if you have some. Let's just go ahead and create a new one so you can see how this goes. There's another wizard that pulls up, walks you through it. You have two options, dynamically expanding storage or fixed size storage. Dynamically expanding storage is recommended. You can start out with a smaller disk, disk size and, um, and it expands just like it sounds as it grows. Um, a fixed size storage is you're going to set 20 gigabytes or 40 gigabytes, whatever you choose, and that's where you're going to be stuck at. You can also add uh, more disks after you've installed your operating system, but that's more of an advanced option. So for now, we'll just stick to the defaults. Um, uh, and it's important to note that this one actually uh, runs faster as well. It reads and writes the disk faster than the fixed size storage does. And so here you can choose the name of the virtual disk that you're creating. You can name it whatever you want, and you can put it on your computer wherever you want. So if you have multiple hard drives on your computer, you can choose the one that you want to actually install it on. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this. So you could have a dedicated hard drive if you wanted to. Um, you can Here you choose your size. It recommends that you start with at least 10 gigabytes. Uh, mine lets me go all the way up to 2 terabytes, but I'm just going to leave it at the default. Uh, it, I would recommend maybe setting it a little higher if you have the disk space available. It's amazing how fast you'll go through it, especially when you're setting up a new operating system. So uh, even though it expands uh, on the it expands dynamically, sometimes I like to set it a little bit higher. Uh, some programs can get nitpicky if you don't. So there's the summary. It shows you what you just created. I wants to show you again. So there you go. Now it should pop up right here. And there it is and uh, let's go ahead and go through the boot wizard. So this is, this is the, uh, the first time we're launching it, so you get a special wizard when you launch it. And it's called the first run wizard. And it works much like the other ones. Um, now's the time where you need to have your 
uh, operating system and install this candy or you need to have it on a, a jump drive or you can even have it on a mounted ISO image. Uh, basically if it's on your computer somewhere like a, an actual file you can click this folder and browse and navigate to it to find it. Uh, if you have the disk, uh, actual installed disk you can choose it here. So go ahead and pick the one. I actually don't have a disk so I'm going to skip this step. Just going to close it and then I'm going to power down my virtual machine because it's not going to be able to boot. It's going to fail to boot. So a uh, quick note here, uh, if it was open and running, when you close it down you get the option to save the machine state, send a shutdown signal, or power off the machine. Uh, I can go ahead and power off the machine since uh, there's nothing on it, but you would technically want to send the shutdown signal and that's basically what going to start menu shutdown. If you use save state, it's not quite like putting it to sleep. Uh, it has to save a bunch of information onto the virtual disk so that it can remember exactly where it was and it's a little more time consuming and I don't suggest it unless you have something really important and you just really want to save your state. It works just fine, it just takes a little longer and it's not quite as convenient if you ask me. So since I'm not using this, if you ever need to get rid of a virtual machine, just right click it, click remove and then you want to delete all files or you can just remove the machine and keep the files if you want to use that hard disk for uh, or that virtual disk for another machine you can but I'm just going to delete all files because I can and just to show you what you get when you're done is this uh, you can expand the window as much as you want you can drag it around it works just like a normal application I'll go ahead and log in here uh, one important thing to note is once you get it up and running you want to install all your security updates that you might be behind on and the very next thing that I suggest doing is going up here into your toolbar clicking devices and installing guest additions um, before you install these additions uh, it doesn't let you resize the window like you want you have to go into windows and choose the screen resolution um, also your mouse doesn't nicely transport in and out and switch automatically like this um, it kind of gets jammed in the side and you have to hit the left control button to unlock it to get back into your Mac. Uh, it's just really inconvenient workflow and that's something it didn't say in the instruction manual so that's one of the first things I would do. It makes it so less frustrating to work with. It makes it uh, operate a lot more natively.